What's up gamers, welcome to the channel. I'm currently in a flux contract boss fight and in this video, I would be showing you how you can fight a flux contract and not take any damage pretty much and run through all these and farm them all and all the things associated with it. You're gonna have a lot of fun with this video, so get ready to hunt and farm some flux contracts. Let's get into it. You might be asking, what are the benefits of doing all these flux constructs? Well, one is that they all drop their green core, which pretty much you can fuse to a zonite weapon, which is going to enhance your damage. You can also add it to other weapons weapons and that's going to make it look a lot cooler as well. Next, they drop zonite charges which you can use at dispensers to get zonite parts. Sometimes they also drop zonite parts, but it's not a crazy amount, but the zonite charges are definitely going to be great for dispensers. And defeating bosses like these flux constructs will raise your EXP which will pretty much eventually lead to silver monsters spawning in your world and higher level constructs like the gold ones, which are level four, captain four and soldier construct fours. I just also wanted to do a quick disclaimer. You can use any build you want to beat up these flux constructs. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. You could use the silver lino weapons from our lino video, or you could even use some of the bone weapons that we put in our Gleox slaying video. So feel free to do it however you want. I'm just giving you a basic outline of what you can possibly do. Also, please feel free to write what you do in the comments below it'll help everyone out so much and it also helps me out and i really appreciate you guys for putting all that information down in the comments okay so this is a flux construct one and you can start initiating the fight by just maybe taking a shot at its head they're not too crazy to fight so what's gonna happen is flux construct one is gonna run up to you and you can run right underneath it and what you can notice about this is that its core is always gonna be in the same spot and that's gonna make it break apart and then you can pretty much just nuke a construct one these are probably the most fun ones to deal with because this core is just not moving so we're gonna see and prolong it just so you can see what a phase two is of this or its next move and it takes a bit like you have a lot of time in order to <laughs> completely do something here so look at this this is pretty cool you can actually use the blocks to your shield as well just want to point it out there then they have this very little platform on this little platform you can do either jump or you can do the completely cool ability called the recall, which you can hop on it and it just jumps up to it. But like I said, this one's not too hard to reach. You can literally go right underneath and just shoot it. And another thing that you could do at this part of the fight is you can pretty much just go underneath it with your alter hand and just pull this out. And the whole thing's going to come apart. And then you can pretty much just finish off this thing just like that. Fight is really easy. Contract one is the most easiest fight that you're gonna have, and it's a stable fight. So you can use this to get a bunch of zone charges and uh, this drop over here, which isn't that OP. So if you want to see what it looks like on a Zonite weapon, this is my 10 mighty Zonite sword. Pretty much if we are to do an ultra hand here, this is what we're going to get. A Flux Core 1 Pounder with the 20 Zonite sword and the Contract 1 Core is going to be 10 and the mighty zonite sword is going to double up so it's 20 and 10 to give you a 30. that's how much power this weapon is going to have which is funny because the master sword is actually calculated to be a 30 damage so there you go you just got the master sword damage right over here on killing flux one if you want to know where some flux construct one locations are there's one over here right from Bravery Islands located over here there's going to be two in the top left corner in the Hebra sky area so one all the way on this corner here and another one over here on this sky island and then the one that you can pretty much find at the tutorial spot on tutorial island at the great sky island so there's gonna be four pretty much of these in the sky now if we go down to the depths you're gonna find one over here in this location which is gonna be northeast of this light route over here you're gonna find another one over at this location which is going to be pretty much right in front of these two light routes so you can mark this one on your map as well and we're gonna have one over here all the way at the bottom part of the map and the closest one i can get to you is this light route all the way to here there's gonna be three of them in the depths that you can kill now before we move on to flux construct 2 let's go over a couple of other important things that you should know let's say for example you did fight a flux construct monster and you decided to attach it onto another weapon right and not a flux weapon you're like okay i need to save this for later well luckily a lot of you know who watch my channel but for those who don't know there is a spot in tarrytown where you can disassemble weapons and take the parts you need and use it another time on another weapon so pretty much we're gonna break it down for 20 rupees then you select your weapon. 
You're going to hear a little noise and then it's going to separate the two items. So now you can pick up your soldier's claymore or whatever your original weapon was that you just used as a temporary hold. And then I can grab, let's say, my mighty Zonite spear and I can just go ahead and fuse that to the correct Zonite weapon because we're going to get more damage from these weapons. So that's pretty much what you're going to do anytime you ever run into an issue where you want to separate the piece from the flux construct. So keep that in mind. Tarrytown is your spot to go to to do this. If you want to upgrade your flux constructs even further, well, you can just head over to the Alden Mountain area by Goron City. And I've marked up the spots where we love to do this on our channel called Octorock Enhancing of Weapons. And we have a whole entire video just on Octorock Enhancing and how you can create the most powerful weapons in the game. But as usual, for new people on the channel, I will give the breakdown of pretty much what you have to do. Find your first Octorock, go ahead and drop your weapon. After you drop your weapon, the Octorock is going to suck it up, it's going to sparkle, giving the weapon a modifier and then spit it back at you. Go ahead, pick it up, you should see that modifier, this now has critical hit, and then go ahead and just shoot that Octorok. Then head over to another location on this map where his second Octorok is. Then when you find Octorok number two, what you wanna do is go in front of it exactly when it burrows in the ground, go ahead and save. And pretty much at this point, you're gonna to wanna to drop your weapon every time you reload your game until you get yourself a good modifier, which is going to be the plus 10. I'm not gonna try to get that for the sake of this video, but you get what I mean. So pretty much reload your game. If you didn't get it, it's gonna suck it up again, sparkle and spit it up. Always save on the second one. And I got attack up plus eight. Okay, we're pretty close, pretty close. And now this weapon, instead of dealing 40 damage, is now dealing 48 damage. So two more, we would have done 50 per hit, which is pretty good. Now let's talk about mighty Zonite weapons and the easiest place where you can get some. These are gonna be located down in the Spirit Temple, which is going to be a whole entire quest that you're gonna to have to do. You can follow my video right over here if you want access to the shop at all times. Now, once you complete that entire quest line, you're gonna have this construct sitting over here in this exact spot. If you finish my video, you're gonna know exactly where I am. And when you talk to this construct, it's going to basically tell you that you can buy any of the weapons from here. Now, it's only going to be one in stock. And when you purchase something, it's then going to say it's not anymore in stock. So what you're going to have to do is just make a quick campfire. And when you do that and move to like the next day or another time, you can go ahead and talk to the construct again. And then you're going to see that it's going to have it restocked completely. So this is a great place where you can get yourself mighty Zonite weapons in exchange for some Zonite, which for a lot of people shouldn't be too hard. Another great thing that you could do to get powerful Zonite weapons is going to be fighting any of the constructs that you find throughout the entire world. As you get your overall e experience up in the game, you're going to get a lot of stronger constructs showing up in the world. So it's a great thing when you start getting Soldier Construct 4 or Captain Construct 4. These are the gold ones that start to appear on your map and when you take these ones out it will drop base attachments for the mighty zonite weapons that you pretty much can have as well as their horns they also function as great attachments to power you up so that's just another option on getting really good zonite weapons so for everyone who's curious here's what the mighty zonite beer looks like with the pulverizer on it here's what it looks like with the double-handed sword pretty cool pretty cool here's what it looks like with the single-handed weapon but this is the the flux construct too this is what the spear looks like without anything so you get this little cool bluish glow just like the zonai shield this is what the single-handed sword looks like when you don't have anything attached to it i kind of wish these always looked like this with the blue glow and this is what the long sword looks like oh this one looks so good Look at that. And pretty much this is what it looks like when you have the shield and the sword. So you get that nice glow effect. So yeah, that's pretty much what they look like without any attachments on them. Hey, real quick, if you're enjoying the video, can you hit that subscribe button? That helps out the channel a lot. And you'll know when I drop a new video. Now that we're done with all this, let's move on to Flex Construct 2. As you can see, its vulnerability is not going to be right in front of my face. And it's going to do a teleport over to you attack. Then it's going to slam the ground completely, right? On a double hit. Then what it's going to do over here, it's going to either try to stomp you or take one hand, lift it up and smash. Yeah, that's a smash attack. Now, the cool part about this one is you can start removing pieces of the Flux Construct 2. This will make it so it can never step on you. But that can step on you. That can do some damage. Okay. So in order to break that, you're going to have to remove the bottom part of its two. And now at this point, it's never going to hit you. But you can see its vulnerability spot is right over here. And it's not really going to be moving or anything like that. I also wanted to say that we can do some ascension tricks on number two, which is a little more fun uh, than doing it on a one. Because we can get up to its weak spot if we want. 
This is so cool. And now I'm right by its uh, weak spot. So this is another option you can do. Obviously, arrows are like pretty easy to do. And then you can just whack this part and it completely separates. And then you can beat this up however way you want. And then it's going to do this attack where you notice that Flux 1 was actually much lower during this attack. But Flux 2 is a lot higher than Flux 1. So when it drops these down, you can just go ahead and do a recall on this. Hop on that. And pretty much, it's just going to bring you right back to the top. It's pretty simple here. Now you can shoot it with the arrow. Do whatever you want at this point when you're on top of it. Break it apart. Now, I always wonder what would happen if you just did this. It does not let you throw it off. <laughs> okay, this is another phase of it. It's going to do this little cube movement. And something easy that you want to do is kind of rip off its core when it's coming at you. You can rip off its core actually at any time you want. But this is the only time you really probably need to rip out its core and that's going to completely separate it out. And then pretty much Flux Contra 2 is just going to rinse and repeat and you can just do the same things over again. Ripping it out under, ripping it out under. Grab its arm one. Grab its arm two. He can't do anything useless here. Hit the vulnerability spot. It drops. You can use Ultra Hand at any time to grab it. So, or move any other blocks, honestly. Because it can't do anything to you. And you can finish it off. Yes, I kind of made that a little unnecessarily long for Flux Construct 2. But I just wanted to show you all the options you had when you're fighting it. That way you could pick how you want to make cool Twitter clips maybe of, of ascending up into it, doing some cool attacks, stuff like that. But that's pretty much what Flux Construct 2 is like. A little bit different than 1, more HP, and it's going to drop this thing over here. Okay, so we actually have this from example 1 where it was a... Mighty Zonite Sword and a Flux Construct 1 core. So I'm just going to go ahead and destroy that. So now you can see my Zonite Sword is back at 10. I'm going to go ahead and fuse the 2 one. So you can see what that looks like. And now you can see that my Zonite Sword doubled to 20 plus the 20 Construct 2 core. And I'm going to have a total attack of 40. That's going to be 10 more than the Master Sword. So 40 per hit is pretty good. It's not actually that bad. All right, so locations for the Flux Constructs 2. Let's go. So right to the west of the Great Sky Island, you're going to find one over here at the South Hyrule area. So this one's going to be pretty much over a here. Next up is going to be one over here by the Lanayru Sky, right over here. So a good jump point would probably be right from here at the Uplands or on a Skyview Tower to bring you up to the sky in order to get to here. Now, another one, which is interesting, is going to be by the Wind Temple area. So this is where you're going to find another two. Going north of that at the Sokala Sky is going to be where you're going to find one as well. So luckily, they put three of them right in a row over here on the Sky Islands. Now, let's go down to the depths because there is a quite a bit of good spots where we can hunt these ones. So this one's going to be located over here. This is where Hyrule Castle is. And this is the light route here. So the Neta Minute... <laughs> light route and we're going to go south of that you'll find one right over here now let's hit the ones north up here you're going to find one by the katenim light route which is going to be just a little bit northwest from that one over here you're going to find another one this is going to be from the tayamik light route and it's going to be in its own individual room area which is going to be interesting then all the way over here we have another one just chilling and the closest light route i'd say is going to be either it's so hard to say these backwards this light route i'm, I'm, I'm just gonna say this light route over here it's gonna be to that one or this one will bring you towards where that construct too is now going down we're gonna have one by the abandoned lineru mine so you can get one over here if we go further down to this spot, we're going to have a whole cluster of them here. Now, this one's going to be interesting because you just have to go down the chasm in the Nature Snowfield to find this one. And opposite over here, you come down this chasm at the East Hill Chasm, and you can come down and you can hit these two Flux Construct 2s, which are located right to the east of that one. So feel free to mark those up. And then our final one that we're going to talk about is going to be located right over here by the abandoned Gerudo Mine. So that's another location where you can come down to and fight the Flux Construct 2. And you can feel free to screenshot the overall depths map as well. Now it's time for Flux Construct 3. So I'm going to be making the Flux Construct 3 fight very, very easy for you. So this one's in the Sky Islands, and this one just pretty much walks around compared to the other ones that are just sitting there on platforms with its eyes scanning where the people are. So this is going to be so fun, all right? So get your Ultra Hand ready, and he's going to approach you, right? So as soon as he makes that run towards you, dash under its feet. As soon as you dash under, get your Ultra Hand, rip out one, rip out two, rip out its arm. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, we missed this arm. Okay, if you miss that arm, then just jump. 
and grab that last arm. There we go. Yeah, now at this point, <laughs> at this point, it's not going to be able to do anything to you. And you can just pretty much take pictures with this thing. In fact, I'm going to take a photo. There we go. That's going in the album. Now I know where I can find Flux Construct 3s. You see that? It did not even touch me. And at that point, you can decide when you want to attack it, how you want to attack it. But this thing is useless. So what you want to do with Flux Construct 3 is it's going to shift its parts around completely, right? You see that part? It's going to keep going back and forth wherever it needs to. But you don't even need to jump up to get to that part. You can remove more parts on this thing to make it drop down. So, yep, you can't step on me. So I'm just going to take out another part here. That's number five. And that's number six. So it looks like six parts are enough to knock a Flux Construct 3 down. You can go ahead and just beat up the part. And then it's going to come back together. So this is pretty much the same thing as Flux Construct 1 and Flux Construct 2. It's going to throw something down here and you're just going to want your rewind ability pretty much on this thing. I said rewind. I mean like Breath of the Wild. I mean recall. There we go. And that's going to bring you all the way back up to the top. At that point, you're just going to float wherever you need to go and get to work on that. Let me get my Master Sword out. Just, you know. And you can still just keep doing damage on this thing. It's fun. And it has one more phase, which is the, the block phase. There it is. This is the block phase. So what you can do here is pretty much also rip out more blocks. And you could just target the core one if you want. And when you target the core like this, the whole block will break apart. So that's going to be the simple way of pretty much taking out the Flux Construct 3. But if you have a strong weapon, you won't even have to bother seeing any of the phases besides the first one. And that's how you do it. Flux Construct 3. And I'm going to fuse this on my mighty Zonite Spear. So this is what it looks like here. And if you're curious about the spear damage, the Flux Construct 3 core is going to add 32 damage onto it. So that's going to bring me to a total of 50. You can basically add this to any of the weapons and just get a 32 plus on top of it. But specifically, you want to stick with Flux Construct weapons because those base weapons damage when you attach a part of a construct to it or a Zonite part. Now, let's talk about the Flux Construct number three locations because you saw how fun it was to take those out. So they have a bunch in a row, uh, pretty much when you look at the Sky Islands. You're going to have one over here at the Tabantha area at Lightcast Island. So you're going to have one here. And as we move down north, Gerudo Sky, you're going to have one in the west area as well over here on this platform, right above Satori Mountain. Then we're going to keep going down over here. And when we're in the Farron Sky area, this is right above the Hyrule Bridge. You're going to have another one located right here. So you could be hitting all these pretty much if you have a nice flying machine coming down, smacking these up. And then we have one located in the Thunderhead Isles. This is what it looks like when it's uncovered, but for those who have a storm, you probably don't want to fight this one until you uncover this area. Right to the west of that, we're going to have another one over here. This is going to be the South Nekluda Sky area, and then right above that, we're going to have another one over here that's going to be located over here. Uh, so it's seriously a beautiful continuation of these Flux 3 constructs together. It's a very clean line of Flux 3 constructs all the way here. And then as we go all the way up, there is one located right over here next to where the Labyrinth is. Speaking of Labyrinths, I did make a video on all the Labyrinths on how to get the Spirit Armor. And pretty much a uh, spoiler, when you get to the bottom of the Labyrinths on each of the Labyrinths, you're going to be fighting a Flux 3 construct. So these are going to be located there. I think these are only going to be a one-time fight because I did come back during a Blood Moon and I noticed they did not respawn. So those two up there, and then we're going to have one right over here. These are going to be the three Labyrinth ones. They do not respawn again. So once you take them out, you're done. The other ones that we're going to talk about is, is going to be located close by to the abandoned Ebra Mine. The closest light route I could say is this light route, and you'd be heading over here in this corner. And then you have another one over here which is going to be west of this exact light route, and it's going to be right there on its platform. So you'll be able to see those ones on this side. Going down on the west side, we're going to have another one located in the Gerudo Canyon Mine. So this would be right via the chasm from the Gerudo Summit coming down, and you'd be able to come over and fight this Flux Construct 3. Moving over here at the bottom right corner of the map, we're going to have a Flux 3 over here, and the closest ways you could come is via this light route and then head down to this little edge. This is where the nice geoglyph is above this. And finally, we're going to have a Flux Construct 3 over here, which is going to be easily accessible from this light route over here, coming right down to this. 
And those are pretty much going to be all the spots where you can fight the Flux 3. And I know those are going to be the most important because they have the best drops. So really, this video comes down to hunting Flux 3 constructs. Now you're a professional Flux construct hunter farmer. So you should go ahead and check out this video so you can be good at this too. Seriously, click on it.